One of the interesting things about um, preaching for a living is you, you get to read the Bible um, in ways that uh, you might not otherwise not have the opportunity. And what that means for me is that every three years, uh, I read the same passages, and it never ceases to amaze me how when I read those same passages three years later, how there's a different message or something unique uh, comes out of that reading that I might not have ever thought of before. And that, that's because we read our scriptures in church on a three-year cycle. Your A, B, and C, and it's called the uh, revised le lectionary. And this morning, uh, this week, when I was reflecting on this particular passage, the passage of the mustard seed, the mustard seed, which is a very powerful image in Scripture. In the, in the Gospels, the mustard seed is used on five different occasions, talking about faith, issues of faith. And this time around, reading the, uh, this particular passage, the, the mustard seed image as an image of, for faith um, kind of means to us that it is faith is something you can have less of or more of. And it connotates faith as something that you can acquire. That faith is something that if you work hard enough, that you will gain more of. And for most of us, I think, there have been times in our life, I hope, I, I, I'm assuming, but for me, there have been times in my life where I've asked the question, where is my faith? Or, I don't have enough faith. Or, if only I had faith, I could move a mountain. Or as it Jesus suggested you could take a mulberry tree and rip a mulberry tree out of the ground. Now, we talk about faith as a, an asset, something that you can acquire. But what occurred to me this time around was that faith is not something that you can have less or more of. And I really think that when Jesus and the disciples said to Jesus, increase our faith. They were like you and I, you know, wondering about our faith journey and, and wishing we had more. Because if we had more, we'd be better people. <clears throat> but when Jesus said to them, increase your faith, I don't think he was responding to their question. I think he was talking in a manner that says, I don't need to increase your faith. Increase your faith. I don't need to increase your faith. You already have everything you need. Faith the size of a mustard seed is all that is necessary. Not so much as gaining more faith will make you better. I believe Jesus is saying, I said, he says to us, your faith is more important when in terms of how it is directed and how you use it. It's about putting your faith in the right place. It is about putting your faith in the right being, in the right person. But one of the challenges that we have faced over the course of history is trying to determine the difference between what faith means and what belief means. The difference between faith and belief. Faith is a gift. Faith is a gift that comes to us naturally. And the faith the size of a mustard seed is something that we need to nourish and to cherish. The images that we've heard about the mustard seed is one in which Jesus said elsewhere, if you take the mustard seed and you put it in fertile ground, it will grow into a great tree or a great bush in which the, the birds can live. But the key point being is that you need to take that mustard seed and put it in fertile ground. If you were to take a mustard seed and put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in a drawer somewhere, it will be nothing but a mustard seed. It will remain so. That the faith of a mustard seed is something for us to nurture and to look after 
and to recognize that that's all that's necessary. Putting it in the right place and trusting in our relationship with God to assist us in that work of faith. But then we begin to think over the course of, as I said a moment ago, over the course of history, this whole concept of belief. And what has happened over time is that believing has become something that we need to understand as a certain set of values or certain statements that need to be true for us to be faithful. And what I mean by that is to believe, you need to believe in God, let's say, as a base, as ground zero. So believing in God would be one thing that would be important to be a faithful person. I have faith that God is my creator and that God loves me and I am in relationship with the God who is the creator of all things. And the second thing may be that, that the Bible is the revealed word of God in some manner. But I think that, that somehow God, through the Spirit, in some manner, has revealed God's self to us through Scripture. Another tenet for belief might be that Jesus is the Son of God. And we could even debate, what does that mean? Is he physically the Son of God? Spiritually the Son of God? What does it mean for Jesus to be the Son of God? So there's certain set of base standards upon which we base our faith as Christian people. But then over time, we have heard and seen different groups and organizations and churches and uh, uh, movements in the course of history continue to interpret what those set of beliefs must be in order to be faithful. And some of them, you know, could be something like uh, some people believe that the Bible is the inerrant word of God. That every dot and tittle of the scripture is, is written by, by God himself. Or that people believe in uh, uh, creation, the book of Genesis, rather than the theory of evolution. That's very important to some people. Or others might believe that uh, Jesus actually physically walked on water. Or that in order to be faithful and to be a true Christian, that Jesus raised others from the dead. And Jesus himself was raised physically from the dead. And even more intense in terms of belief structures that, you know, only infants can be baptized, or on the other side of the coin, it must be an adult to be baptized, or some people believe in the, in the rapture, or some people believe in purgatory, and on and on we go in terms of a set of belief systems that are, quote, a requirement to be considered a faithful follower of Jesus. In other words, belief systems are about believing in the right things. And for many, that's very important. You need to believe in the right things in order to be faithful. So faith becomes a belief system that's a matter of the head. Right? You think about, what are all the rules that I need to adhere to to be, a, to be faithful? It's not an issue of the heart. It's not, a, it's not a feeling thing. And I think that over history time, uh, course of history, uh, during the period of the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century, there was a lot of thought given to the belief structures and what was important and what wasn't. During the Enlightenment period as well, that people did not, no longer took Scripture or the words of God through Scripture uh, at face value. And that, that the scientific, uh, verifiable information and, and, and facts became part of the conversation that unless something was verified scientifically, it couldn't be believed. And that began to have a great influence on the belief structures and the dogma and the doctrine of the Christian church throughout the world. But my question being is, does God want a belief structure that is about the head, that is intellectual? Does God want us to be engaged in discussions and debate uh, about what is right and what is wrong? And if you're right, you're in. If you're wrong, you're not. That faith, I believe what God wants is about understanding that faith is a gift 
and that we are given that gift to exercise it as we best can. How many of you have had the pleasure uh, to teach your children how to swim? <laughs> or, or swimming teachers yourselves? How'd that go for you? <laughs> what was the experience like? Seriously, what was it like? Frustrating? <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating. It was difficult. Why was it difficult? Like, what was your child doing? Because I'll tell you what my child was doing. <laughs> frustrating as heck because he did not want to go. B would not let me go once I got him in the pool, screamed and yelled the entire time, you know, would not listen to what I had to say and just clung like Velcro to me the entire time, Virgin. And I kept saying, Christopher, trust me. <laughs> trust me. <coughs> so I could say that till I was blue in the face. Trust me. And he'd still cling. And he'd still scream. And he still wouldn't let me go. Until one moment, he loosened. He loosened. And suddenly I began to find him, letting me hold him in the water. I held him in the water for a time. And then he clung again. <laughs> Next week I'd go back and I'd float him. And in time, I was able to let my hands go. And there he lay on the top of the water. Happy as a clown. He learned to have faith and trust in the fact that he had the capacity to float and to be buoyant. But he could only understand that and know that for himself. That little mustard seed of faith took time, took time and trust to develop in order for him to get to a point where he understood that I would not let him sink, even though I wasn't touching him. For me, that is analogous to what it means to be a follower, a believer, and a child of God, to have faith and trust in a God who will not let us sink no matter how frightened we may be, how we do not want to let go, and how uncertain we are that we can actually achieve what God wants us to achieve. Faith in the mustard seed, to be nurtured, to develop, and to evolve as we nurture it, and look after it, and tend to it, always in the full knowledge and awareness that God will not let us be. Thanks be to God. Thank you.